What's going on guys, Mike here and welcome back to another video. So today's topic is much like the last one where we're gonna be focusing on building a dividend portfolio, but this one's got a twist. Whereas the last video we focused on investing through the TSX and in Canadian dollars, this one we're gonna focus on using US currency and investing it through the New York Stock Exchange. Now, I'm sure this question has already popped in everyone's mind as to why this is something we would want to consider. Now, for those of you who aren't retired, maybe aren't thinking this way yet, but people that are close to retirement or already retired, you probably would, you probably have the aim to spend most of your months in winter in, say, the U.S. or somewhere else hot that most likely has or deals with U.S. currency. So the reason why we're focusing on this today is because we potentially have some subscribers here that have a large sum of money sitting in a US account that could still be in Canada or potentially somewhere else in a United States bank uh, that's in pure United States cash. Now, so we're gonna be taking a look into what we could invest in that could build the same style a uh, dividend portfolio that we built in the last video, but keeping it in US currency. So you don't have to convert it back to Canadian, invest it, get the dividends and then convert it back to the US. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And in today's video, we're gonna have the same goals. We're gonna be trying to aim for a 4% annual dividends, as well as aiming to have that one to 2% uh, annual growth in the portfolio. So let's get right to it. So starting things off with, you're gonna recognize this Excel sheet. The only differences are is that it's been converted to US, right? So instead of it saying $300,000 here, now it says 235,000. And you'll notice that our annual dividends has gone from 12,000 down to just, just shy of $9,000 annually. Now that's again, because it's been converted uh, into US currency. So obviously like the last video, we have this nice black blob here that I'm hiding and we're gonna reveal the certain sections at a time so I can explain the rationale behind each one. So let's get right to it. This video, we actually are gonna uncover the first couple because they're kind of all similar. And that is again, investing into the Canadian banks. Now, some things that people don't re realize is that in some um, investments within Canada, you can actually invest in through the New York Stock Exchange rather than going to the TSX. So right now, if you invest into TD, it's probably like TD.TO, which is the Toronto Stock Exchange. If you do TD NYSE, that's the New York Stock Exchange and it's in US currency. So much like the last video, I the last video we had H Bank uh, ETF, whereas this way, this particular method, that, that ETF doesn't exist. Maybe it does, but maybe I'm just unaware of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do them individually, right? So we're gonna do TD, we're gonna do Royal, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, BMO, and National Bank of Canada. So, so again, this is investing with US currency into the New York Stock Exchange. Now, just for the new viewers that didn't watch the last video, I did go over the dividends in, say, for the TD Canada Trust and Royal Bank and just kind of indicated how the dividends grows each year. So, for example, TD Canada Trust has paid dividends for like 150 years uh, and the last 70 of them have been uh, increased year after year. So you can just see this example where it started out as 20 cents uh, per share per quarter from 24, 20, 2014 to 2024 at 75 cents a share. So you can, again, when you're focusing on, on dividends uh, and living off of it, it's important that it increases, you know, cause you don't want your buying power to, uh, you know, windle away based on inflation. You want your dividends to stay ahead of inflation. So again, just showing one more of the banks here, uh, Royal Bank again with the increase year after year of dividends. So again, I focused more on this in my last video. So if you are interested in knowing more, definitely check out that one if you haven't already. So one of the things I do wanna also point out that uh, I personally primarily invest within like Wealthsimple. Now Wealthsimple, as far as I understand, does not offer the New York Stock Exchange tickers uh, specifically on these particular investments. So if you're with Ball Simple and this method you're interested in, you might have to consider something like Quest Trade because Quest Trade does offer both options. If you search TD in the Quest Trade uh, uh, trading platform, you'll see TD.TO and TDNYSE. So that's just something to be made aware of. Um, so if you don't have Quest Trade and you're looking to do this, you may have to consider that or an alternative uh, brokerage that offers these types of services. 
So moving into the next one here, uh, we have O, and that is O Realty. Now, oh, you know what, actually before I actually start any further on this one, I also wanna mention that um, these are chosen because again, if you're doing this in a taxable account as well, um, the Canadian investments are gonna be a bit more tax efficient because of the eligible dividends tax credits. So I primarily try to keep this in uh, Canadian investments through the US currency, but it doesn't always work with that way, which is obviously why you can see O Realty, uh, which is a, a US focused real estate REIT. Now this is probably one of the biggest REITs in North America. And I just kind of have some quick highlights on this guy as well. So as a real estate REIT, it is increasing its dividends annually, which is obviously something that we want to see. So you can see in 2023, it was at 26 cents, you know, 2022, which was at 25 cents, 2021 at 23 cents. So you can see how it has been, you know, increasing uh, each year, which is again, so important when you're looking at a dividend focused uh, portfolio. Now, I'm not going to necessarily get into the specifics within this particular video on what O Realty is. If you guys are interested, definitely leave a comment below if you want me to do a specific video of kind of a stock analysis on this particular REIT. But just as a quick highlight, you can see here that its funds from operation uh, growth is at 9.2% for 2022. This is obviously their, um, their year end for uh, 2022. Um, their dividend share uh, growth has been 4.7% for that year. And I just kind of want to show like since 1994, their dividend growth per share for, uh, for their dividends has been 4.3%. So again, I highlighted it in my last video. I'm highlighting it in this video. Super important to have dividend growth in a dividend portfolio. Don't just get, you know, dividend trapped where it pays out 7%, but it doesn't increase at all, right? That's something that's very important because again, if you start with say a $9,000 annual dividend, you know, you want that to keep up with inflation. You want that to increase year after year. So again, if you guys are interested in O Realty uh, REIT investments, uh, definitely leave a comment below like I had mentioned if you want me to do a specific video on these guys. So moving into the next one, uh, again, Enbridge, right? Now, again, I did focus on Enbridge in my last video, but Enbridge is another one of those uh, investments where you can do through the New York Stock Exchange. And me personally, I just love Enbridge just for its, uh, you know, its, its consistency. And it increases its dividends over the last 29 years, which I highlighted in my last video. And I do have two videos specifically on Enbridge if you're interested in knowing more about that. So again, I'm just going to touch base on that. I'm not going to say too much about Enbridge. People might get kind of bored if I keep talking about it. Anyways, moving on, this one is again um, a little bit different than the last one, and that is BND, which is a bond ETF in the United States. Now, I didn't highlight this on my last video, but when it comes to bonds, since the bonds are there to level out the portfolio uh, to reduce volatility, it's important, at least in my opinion, to keep the bonds within the local currency. So in the last video, we had ZAG, Z-A-G, uh, which again is totally just 100% focused on the Canadian bonds. It's not on anything international and different currencies or anything like that. Because again, you want your bonds to be safe. And if you add a different country of bonds, then you're actually introducing additional risk because you're, you're introducing different currency, right? So now in this particular, uh, portfolio that we're focusing on we're in US currency so we did the total US bond market right so which is BND it's just kind of a one catch-all it's a one ETF that kind of is um, balanced in all the different types of bonds you can kind of get your hands on to and it pays us 3.25 percent so it's not like super high but it's also a good amount at, at the same time so that's what we're doing with bonds today and then to finish things off with, you guys are going to be surprised because it's not XUQT, it is VT, which is a Vanguard total U or total stock market. So this isn't just US, this is the entire world through Vanguard. And it is kind of constructed differently than XUQT, but I didn't find anything within the US that had anything similar to XUQT. And of course, XUQT um, trades uh, at... Um, uh, a Canadian currency. So I couldn't use it in this particular portfolio because we don't want to have our US cash converted to Canadian dollars. So VT, which is very similar, like I said, to um, to XUQT, but the weightings are slightly different. So you can see here, like, you know, it's got 62% 
of its funds in the United States, and then Japan is the next highest, UK, Canadian is only at 2.7%, which I, I really liked in this portfolio, like in our dividend portfolio here, because we have like 30 or 25% of our money in Canada because of the banks and Enbridge. So I didn't want something that had a high uh, allocation to Canada because you know, uh, the XQT or this one, or uh, XQT has 25% allocated. So this was just, this just kind of worked out really well where it was traded in US funds and it had a lower allocation to Canada. So we're not overlapping too much, right? Or, or overexposing ourselves to Canada too much. Um, there's only like 15% allocated to VT. So there's not like a huge amount anyways, but just something to kind of be aware of, right? Um, and so, yeah, so this, this is, this would, basically be the growth portion of the portfolio, just like what XQT was. And just to kind of show you the performance over the last five years, you can see that they follow each other very closely, just with some a some, uh, little bit of gaps here. Um, what year was this in 2021? Uh, but otherwise, very close. And right now, over the last five years, they are within basis points of performance of each other. So again, this is the growth portion of the portfolio in our dividend portfolio. So now let's get right into the performance, right? So let's get right into it. So we're going to look at uh, this again is at $235,000 because it's in US. We are going to be uh, re not reinvesting the dividends. And of course, we want to see the uh, income on this portfolio. So just like my Excel sheet, I have everything populated in the portfolio. And you'll see here, just like the last portfolio, it our Canadian version, I think, was 2.36%. Uh, and this one comes in at a compound annual growth rate of 2.31%. Now, I didn't mention this in the last video. I did forget. This does not include dividends, right? If you included dividends, this number would be higher. So this is because we're living off of the dividends. So this is what the portfolio is doing with us not reinvesting it, right? So you can see it went from 235000 to 283000 And this, is, again, is from 2014 to 2024. So... I, I'm very happy with this. Again, our, our goal was anywhere between one to 2%, and this is achieving it 2.31%. And then the portfolio annual income. So of course, dividends was lower back in the day in 2014. So if we started the portfolio in 2014, the portfolio would have paid out 7,200 US dollars. And you fast forward it to today, and it's actually paying out now $10,207. So Again, you can see how that portfolio income is growing and it's staying ahead of inflation, right? So very important. So there you have it. That is the portfolio that we have for the US side investing through the New York Stock Exchange. Now I did highlight on this on the last video, but for those of you who didn't see it, I do just wanna quickly highlight on the aspect of time in the market. So in my last video, we did have a section based on like the best and the worst times um, invested over the course of like from 1988 to 2000 or 2023 so a good chunk of years and so you know each each section you would see like if you invested into like you know one year you know you had that the worst time which was in 2008 you lost 40 percent of your portfolio but if you actually had been invested for five years you actually didn't necessarily lose anything as close to 40 percent right it just kind of highlighted on how time in the market reduced risk. Now, the reason why I mention that is because some people uh, focus on, well, I don't wanna put my money into the market because I don't wanna lose my money. Well, yes, I guess it could still happen, but if you have time on your hands and you're not planning on touching the actual assets with, within it and you're just planning on living on the dividends, you should, with time, not lose any money, right? If you invested it for one year, yes, if the 2008 stock market crash happened again, you would lose 40% of your money. But the best thing to know is, is like examples of like TD Canada Trust, they paid their dividends and never missed anything during like World War II, uh, the 2008 stock market crash, the crash that happened, or the, the 2000 dot com crash, the COVID crash, it continued paying through all that, all the banks did. No banks missed any dividends. And same thing with Enbridge and Old Realty, they didn't miss any of that. So the reliability of the dividends is what is key here, right? You can allow the portfolio to fluctuate based on the market conditions and allow the time to work in your favor. So that's just something I really wanted to highlight on. Now, again, I hope you guys, you enjoyed this video. Definitely subscribe if you guys haven't already and check out this video next if you're uh, looking for more content. We'll see you guys later.